Constructing a congruent triangle using side angle side congruence. That's what we're going to do today. Well, if I'm going to construct a triangle that's congruent to that one, I probably should start off with some sort of a side. Uh, I'm going to try and just draw a line, and eventually I want it to be a representative of this one down here. So I'm going to just draw a big line uh, just to make sure I need something to start with. No problem. Sure. Now I need to establish how long that side is. Remember we go side, angle, side. So the first thing I have to do is construct a congruent side. I'm going to construct one that is that big. So if we don't drop our compass, we extend it to the length of that particular side, which appears to be about that long. Okay. I'm going to go to this end over here of the line I drew. And I'm going to draw an arc that intersects it. I'm not moving my compass. I'm just going to draw an arc. Whoops. Let's make sure I do it correctly. Okay. Pretty simple. So the distance from that vertex to that vertex on my original triangle is the same distance as from the end of the line I drew to where the arc intersects my line. Got it. I have my side, my first one. But we're doing side angle side congruence. So that means after I construct a side, that means I need to construct a congruent angle. Now we construct an angle congruent to this one over here, this one on the left, whichever is fine. I'm going to construct an angle that is congruent to this angle over here on the left. Now all we're going to do is the exact same construction we do constructing congruent angles. Of course, we all know what that is. But on the off chance we don't, Let's refresh our memory. To construct a congruent angle, you put your vertex, excuse me, your non-pencil end on your vertex. You want to draw an arc that's going to intersect both, well, let's go with sides of my triangle. Got it. And I do the exact same thing down here. This point is going to be representative of that vertex. So I do the same thing, non-pencil end on that point, and then I draw an arc. Now we don't know where it's going to hit our line, so we got to make it a little bigger than maybe normal. Probably a little bigger than that arc. That's fine. I do not change the width of my compass. Cool. Now, because we remember how to construct a congruent angle, we measure the distance from where the arc intersects both sides. So from there to there. And that distance there will be the same as this distance here. And what we've done is, oh, that x is where my line goes through. That x will be where my line will go through. Sure, no problem. So from that intersecting, where the arcs intersect, that intersection point, to the end of my line, I'm just going to draw a line that goes through that bullseye, that X, those crisscrossing arcs. I'm going to make it a little longer, kind of like that. I've constructed a side that's congruent to that side and an angle that's congruent to that angle. Awesome. But I'm not done yet because remember I'm doing side angle side congruence. So I need to, and of course we go in order so I need to construct a side congruent to that one. Side angle, I must construct a congruent side. Oh, okay, no problem, we've done that. I take my compass. I measure the distance of that side. It's about that long. I put the non-pencil in on the vertex. I draw an arc that crosses my line. Oh, the distance from here to here is the same as from here to where my arc intersects my line. Side, angle, side. There's only one way to complete the triangle. I go from that intersecting point to that intersecting point. I have no choice. It cannot be anything else. I draw a line. And I have constructed a congruent triangle using side angle side congruence. Yay.